You can count on the Weather Channel to bring you in-depth team coverage of the tornado outbreak. And our crews are spread out across the middle of the country where storms have been pretty much non-stop as we headed through the overnight hours. And let's take it out to Jim Cantori. He is in Thurman, Iowa. And Jim, the good news out of Thurman is no fatalities. Oh my goodness. When you think about a town that's been uh, about 75% damaged or destroyed, Jeff, that, that is phenomenal news, almost miraculous news if you ask me. But uh, this is kind of a testament to this whole outbreak, guys. This was not a, a March 2nd where we had you know, these long track EF4s and EF5 type tornadoes. I mean, you're, you're talking about storms that were more EF, EF1, EF2 type damage. There may be, Woodward may have been an EF3, I don't know, but at least up in here, this to me looks like EF1, uh, EF2 damage. They came through here with the Bobcat, by the way, I talked about this last time, how you need to clear out these streets. So now uh, folks can get down and through here when the curfew, the curfew's lifted now, so they can come in any time and then get to some of the homes. You can see some of the homes that have been very heavily damaged. Looks like a single wide back there that uh, has no roof and certainly has a lot of tree damage to it. And there's a ton of tree damage, obviously, all, all the way around and through here. And that's pretty much what we're seeing uh, all around uh, Thurman here. I want to bring in Mason Umphreys. He is the mayor's son, and he's going to take us back to yesterday afternoon, Mason. Um, you you actually alerted your dad of the tornado warning, right? Yes, I did. I was um, sitting there, and I got a phone call that from Code Red, Code Red uh, Alert Systems and told us that we had a tornado warning. Well, at that point, I told dad, and he left and turned on the sirens. Siren, yes, right, yes. Right, right. And um, about two minutes after the sirens were done, it, it hit, and it hit hard. So you rode it out in the house. Where yes. did you go in the house? Um, my grandparents actually came up once they heard the sirens, and I got them in the house, and we went down to the basement. Me, my grandma, aunt, brother and sister, and my mom went down to the basement. I mean, describe what it was like as the tornado was. Yeah. It, um, it sounded like a train. and it was, it was all calm, just raining a little bit at first, and then it sounded like a train was going right by our house. But real quick, I mean, yeah, it, 30 seconds a minute, yeah. it's over, right? Yeah, maybe at the most two minutes, and then it was done that fast. Everybody okay? Yes. Damage? Um, we have damage to our um, house. Um, shingles are gone, some gaffling, a lot of tree damage. Um, our chimney was torn off. And most, for the most part, uh, tree damage. So like what you see around here? Yes, right? it, same story up there. So how did it feel to have to be the man of the house there for a little bit? It, it's, um, it's surreal. <laughs> it is. It, you know, Dad, um, I ran outside and checked how everything was after it calmed down, and he's he got um, a ride up to the house because he could barely move anywhere in town at that point. Right. And he was just in awe, you know, hoping we were all right and coming. So when your dad went to sound the siren, obviously there was a disconnect. When did you touch base with him again um, after uh, after you guys took refuge in the basement? I went up after I, the roar calmed down, and uh, I told my parents or my mom and my grandma that they didn't really want to see what was outside. So, and I went back down and I uh, talked to him for a little bit and I went back up and I ran outside and really got to experience the damage and I saw my dad get dropped off and running up praying we were all right and right. It's, it, it's just in awe, you know, hard to see. Is it tough to look at your town like this? It is, it's very tough, you know. I've lived here my whole life and I've never seen anything like this and I don't really think I'll ever will again, or hopefully anyway. Have you had a chance to talk to any of your friends? Um, I, I talked to my few friends that lived north of here, and they didn't have any damage, but they were just hoping me and one of my friends that lived right down here was all right, and thankfully everyone was. All right. You're a brave young man, Mason. Thanks Thank for you. talking to Anytime. us. Uh, taking care of his family while well, his dad is out taking care of the town here uh, in Thurman, Iowa. So, uh, guys, a lot of cleanup to be done, but uh, as we've uh, been told, certainly from, from Mason's dad, that we're going to see the residents coming back in here very, very shortly. We're going to see the power crews continue to put up the poles, and even volunteers will be let in around noontime today to uh, get us, uh, of course, a little bit of help in the cleanup effort as well. So, all around uh, good news here, especially with just minor injuries. Amazing. Amazing when you look around and see this damage. Jeff, back to you. All right, thank you very much. Jim Cantori from Thurman, Iowa. And the